ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable with Demetria L. Lucas. OMG, we missed an episode last week because I had to move, but I am officially moved out of LA. All of my worldly possessions are still on a truck bound for Maryland, but I have made it to Maryland. I'm crashing with my parents for another week or so before I get on this plane to Ghana. I'm super excited right now. I was going through like a nervous phase and then like a WTF, what am I doing with my life phase? And then it just like all settled in and I was like, all right, well, this is it. This is what I'm doing with my life. So yeah, I got in Friday night. I slept on air mattress for four days, which look, when I moved out to LA, I want to say I was like 39. Remember, I ended up sleeping on that air mattress for months, waiting for my bed to arrive. It was fine then. At 43, not so much. I was like, um, why am I sleeping on this air mattress again? I need to go check my ass into a hotel. But I didn't. Uh, but I got home. I slept in the bed all day Saturday and watched like Jurassic Park movies. I love Jurassic Park. The reviews were terrible. They were like, there's no storyline. And I was like, I'm not watching for the storyline. I'm watching for the dinosaurs. But I laid in bed all day Saturday and watched Jurassic Park to just enjoy the feel of laying in a bed again. And then on Sunday, I started my DC shenanigans. I went to brunch at 1.30 and didn't make it back in the house until 10.30. I was like, this is ridiculous. We did three different venues. I'm so happy to see black people again. Not that LA doesn't have black people, but it, DC is a very specific kind of black that really appeals to me. I just wouldn't come home. I was like, where else can we go? Where else can we go? Where else can we go? We went to brunch in Georgetown, and then we hit up this rooftop CL. Beautiful views of the city. I really miss being in DC. I'm like genuinely very, very happy to be home. And then last night we went to, I don't remember the name of the spot. It was some Monday night spot. Everybody and their mother was out. I ran into like a bunch of people. Abby from CNN, my friend was having cocktails with her and I went to meet them. I love me some Abby. She's such a sweetheart. I really, really enjoy her. And then some other DC staples like slid through. So yeah, it was really, really good times. Him is coming down this week to see me off again before I go. <laughs> Remember I had those the shirts that said interested men act interested. And I kept posting the shirts and kept posting about interested men act interested. Um, selling the shirts because I was closing the store. He follows me on social media, but he took that as like a, you know, like I was trying to send him a sign or signals or something. So he stepped his game up and he's really been acting like super, super interested. And I said something to him about it. And I was like, you know, did something happen? Because it feels like there's been a shift. And he was like, well, you running all over the place talking about interested men act interested. So, you know, I'm acting interested. And I was like, I wasn't complaining. I was not complaining. I was making an observation. He's so sweet right now. I love when he's like this. (laughs) My mother asked me, she said, are you, are you still getting on a plane to Ghana? I said, why wouldn't I be getting on a plane to Ghana? And so she was like, I don't know. Him came to LA. I said, he did. I said, what had to do with anything? And she was like, I don't know. I was just asking. And she said, him's coming to DC. I said, yeah. She said, are you sure you're getting on a plane to Ghana? I said, yes. And she said, oh, we'll see. Ma'am, I paid this apartment six months in advance. I paid good money for this first class seat to get across the Atlantic. One, because the flight is 10 hours. Also, because I can carry 70 pounds in every bag instead of 50 and I need the extra weight. I'm really seriously, honestly, and truly not trying to take more than four bags to Ghana, but it's looking like five. (sighs) And I realized I have to repack because the way I packed, even to come out here, I just packed like an asshole. And I was like, what are you thinking? I guess because I was packing so much stuff. Like I packed a bag to keep out here for 10 days in the event that my stuff from LA, in case it took the full, I guess, 14 business days to get here. I just didn't pack sensibly. So I was like, I need to go back through everything and make sure I'm taking the right things and not overpacking, but also not underpack. It's a thing. What else is going on? My car got picked up on Thursday in LA and the guy hit me yesterday and was like, yeah, I'll be in Maryland tomorrow with your truck. Come meet me at XYZ to pick it up. And I was like, yo, Thursday to Tuesday, not bad. I was like, that's a good moving company. If I thought about it better, I would have put all the stuff that I intend to take to Ghana in the back of that truck to make sure it got here on time. Because if the moving stuff doesn't arrive on time, then I have to push my flight until after my stuff gets here, which I'm kind of stressed out about. But there's nothing I could do to make it go faster. It's not on the truck right now. And I say that every morning. And my dad was like, it doesn't have to be here until the 26th. Like, you have time. You have a whole week. If the truck got here in five days, they can get your stuff here in five days. You know, they just have to figure it out. And I was like, I mean, could they just put it on the goddamn truck? 
Okay. There's nothing I can do about it. So if I have to delay it a couple days, then I do. And that's just that. And womp womp. What else is going on? We have good black news this week. Some good black news. Not all good black news. We missed last week because I had to move. And we're probably going to miss an episode when I actually move too. As much as I love doing this podcast, I can't stress myself out trying to do an international move and then spend like five and six hours taping the day before. I just, I can't. It's not feasible. But I'll let you know the date. We have a full week of episodes. I'm taping obviously today and then it'll also be a Friday episode. So no need to, um, to freak out. I feel like there's something I'm supposed to be telling you that I'm not. Oh, if you're in the city or if you're going to the National Urban League Convention, I'm speaking on Friday. Friday, I'm on a panel about living your best life, operating at your highest self, tips and tricks and pointers for doing all that. So if you're around D.C. and you want to go to the Urban League Convention, I'm on Friday. I want to say like 2.15. Don't quote me on that. I have to look at the schedule. I got an email last night and they were like, oh, reminder, you have to get a COVID test in order to come to the conference. And I was like, it's a good thing y'all said something because I didn't know. I knew I had to be vaccinated, but I was like, I did not know I needed a fresh COVID test. So when I'm done taping this and going to get my truck, I guess I need to go get a COVID test for Friday so I can speak on the panel. My dad is so funny. I think he's taking my truck. Like he's so excited about it. He's like, oh, well, you know, when he gets here, he's like, I'll take it to get it washed. And then, you know, I, I'm going to get it detailed. And I was like, yo, this isn't my truck anymore. This is my dad's truck. My dad's taking my truck. I'm not taking it to Ghana, so it's fine. It needs to be driven. and Somebody should drive it. I won't be driving it. So, yeah. At least I'm not taking it to Ghana now. We'll have a, a new conversation about that next year. What else is going on? We missed a week, so we missed some good stuff. Some of it I just, I cared about last week, but I don't care about this week. I'm scrolling right now to see if any of this falls under good black news. Yes, let's start with good news first. A lot of folks got married this week. Lawrence J. Ellis from Insecure, Team Lawrence, Lawrence Hive, um, he got married. He posted a picture on his Instagram yesterday and turned off the comments swiftly, hastily. By the time I got to the page, the comments were already turned off. So I don't know if he turned them off from the beginning, out the gate, or he turned them off on the back end because people were saying crazy things. The wedding photos were beautiful. He married his long-term girlfriend, who's also the mother of his, I think, I think it's a daughter. There's a little girl in the pictures, but she's got to be like, Mid two, three, maybe. Um, I thought they were already married, but apparently not. Congratulations to the happy couple. I see many other sites posting the pictures, and I did understand then why the comments were turned off. His wife is white. She could be Latina white or from somewhere else white. So like spicy white, I don't think she's American white. People had a lot of commentary about, you know, successful black man marrying white woman. I don't really care, to be quite honest with you. I, I only care when black men make it a point not to date black women and then also want to throw black women under the bus as their justification for doing so you know if you're attracted to white women because you think that they're like you know cute cute ladies or you too have have gotten caught up in all the remnants of, of white supremacy and you think you know white is right white is colder or maybe you just met a chick that you liked and she happened to be white and you're just like i like this white chick like i don't care As long as you don't throw black women under the bus to justify your choices. And I think if you feel like you need to justify something, like that's that's, that should say something, you know, telling about your choice. If you don't say nothing negative about me, I don't have nothing negative to say about you. Like, live your best life, sir. You and your wife was real cute. The pictures were cute. The dress was gorgeous. I'm not even being shady on some, like, beautiful gowns. But, like, no, literally, the gown was beautiful. Good for them. May they live long and, and prosper as a married couple. Literally, best of luck and wishes to them. I saw our friend Simone Sanders. She got married over the weekend. I didn't see the news reports about it. I was on Instagram. We have a lot of friends in common and um, people started posting pictures and I was like, oh shit, Simone's getting married today. She actually got married the day before. I think she got married on Friday and then there was another round of festivities on Saturday. But she made a beautiful bride. Congratulations to her and her new husband. They got married at, was it Anderson House? It's this, um, this mansion on Embassy Row, right outside Georgetown. So, like, between Georgetown and DuPont Circle. Remember when I used to go on all those, like, architecture tours? When I first got my Nikon. This was, like, 2014, 15, 16. Because me and my ex-husband were both into um, architecture and photography. But we went to visit that house. Um, there was a picture of Simone and her husband coming down the stairs. I recognized the stairwell. I recognized the iron on the stairwell. And I was like, oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous venue. 
It's one of those Gilded Age houses. Remember the Gilded Age on HBO? It's one of those Gilded Age houses that has like one of those big ass ballrooms. She had the wedding and the reception in the same place, but the reception was in the big ass ballroom. And I was like, oh my gosh, it was dreamy. Absolutely dreamy. So congratulations to Simone um, and her husband. I think I said that already, but you can never give married folks too many congratulations. I'm very, very happy for her. Who else? Oh, J-Lo and Ben. Ben Affleck. They got married. I'm actually genuinely happy for them. I think this is J-Lo's fourth marriage. Not even I think. I know because people keep pointing out how many times she's been married. I'm like, look, I told you about my relative who's been married multiple times. And she was like, I will do it and, until I get it right. She don't believe in being unhappy. Her current husband, I want to say she's been with him for 15, 20 years. This one works. The other ones ain't work. And she was like, I'm not sitting up in misery just to say I'm married. I find another husband and did. Multiple times. Good for her. I'm not mad at that family member. Um, but I'm also not mad at J-Lo. J-Lo will not sit up in a bad situation. She believes in love. She believes in companionship. Ma'am does not believe in being alone. She moves on quickly. Some people be like, well, you just broke up with so-and-so, but it's over. I believe in taking a little more time in between situations, do some self-reflection, some evaluation, healing. She abides by the old school rules. The best way, the best way to get over somebody is to get under somebody else. And I was like, well, it, it's an approach that works for her. But I liked her and Ben back in the day. That, remember that album that everybody hated? Something about Ben was in the title. I love you. I love you, Ben. I love you then. I don't remember what it was. I wore that album out. I loved it. And people were like, this is terrible. And I was like, this woman is blissfully happy and deep in love. I think I was deep in love at the time. Probably with him. Not Ben. Him. But yeah, but J-Lo and Ben, you know, they didn't work out the first time. J-Lo said a lot of it was due to the paparazzi and and people being so invasive in in their lives. Which, I understand. But this time around, it worked. Quickly. Because she left A-Rod, they went their separate ways. I think he had cheated on her was the rumor. But she left A-Rod, and they'd been together for a while. But she left A-Rod, and a couple months later, Ben was down in Miami. And people were like, oh, Ben is back? How long is this going to last? They trying for forever. I saw people yesterday being like, I'll give it two years. I was like, I hate it when people say that about people who just got married. Because I heard people say it when I got married. And I was like, y'all was really right. But still, I was like, God damn, like, you wishing the worst over my marriage? That was very hurtful at the time. But maybe, I mean, not even maybe. I guess people saw things that I didn't see. It is what it is. But I'm very happy for Jen and Ben. I also wish them a long marriage, a long, prosperous marriage. I want J-Lo and Ben to be happy. They're real, real cute together. Not that, you know, that's a determination on, you know, how people should be together. You know, their physical appeal. Their physical appeal. I'm not that shallow. But they look happy as fuck. So if that is the case, I want them to be that. I want them to stay that way. I want folks to be happy. I want to be happy. There was something else I was reading about Jen. You know, the wedding dress that she wore, one of them, she had two dresses. Because I guess I'm skipping details for this story. They got married in a wedding chapel in Vegas. They said it was some like iconic wedding chapel that they just rushed off to and decided to get married. Okay. I was reading a story on people and they said that Jennifer Lopez, one of the dresses that she wore for her wedding, she'd had in her closet for years. She went and bought the dress forever ago and was like, you know, I'll save it for the I'll save it for the next wedding. They have her quoted in people. This is something she wrote in her. She has an on the J-Lo newsletter, which I never which I never knew existed. But she said, quote, I've had this dress for so many years and I've just been saving it, saving it, saving it. And now I'm wearing it on my wedding day. I'm not mad at it. What is it? What's what's that movie? They say, if you build it, it will come if you buy it. It will come. Actually, I do that with like good cocktail dresses. Like even if I don't have anywhere to go, I'm just like, I know the occasion will come where I'll need it. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So I just go ahead and like just buy these like fancy ass dresses and hold them in my closet indefinitely. Clearly she wanted to get married again. It was in the back of her mind. It's a possibility. So she bought the dress she liked and held on to it. Okay, carry on, Jen. The occasion did come. There might be something to say for if you buy it. If you build it, if you buy it, it will come. It worked. Good for her and Ben. What else? That was our good married people news. Was there anything else with J-Lo and Ben? Wait, wait, was there anything else with J-Lo and Ben? I'm scrolling this people article. I don't know who did her makeup. The hair is beautiful too. But Jen looks like, like she's in her 30s. Jen is a full past 50. 
between the makeup artists and the Botox people, she could say she ain't got no work done. Sis, stop. Sis, stop. You over 50 and don't look a day over 30. That's more than just good jeans. I'll give you looking a good 40. But like, come on, sis. Come on. She said of her union with Affleck, she says, we're older now. We're smarter. We have more experience. We're at different places in our lives. We have kids now. And we have to be very conscious of those things. It's a beautiful outcome that this has happened in this way at this time in our lives where we can really appreciate and celebrate each other and respect each other. He said Affleck proposed last year with a gorgeous green diamond ring. How did I miss that they were engaged? How did I totally miss that? She also said in the newsletter, we did it. Love is beautiful. Love is kind. And it turns out love is patient. Corinthians could have told you that, babe, but that's neither here nor there. Continue. 20 years patience, she wrote, adding that it was the best night of our lives. And again, I'm reading this from People Magazine. Good for them. I'm genuinely happy for them. Now, a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. How well would you take care of your car if you had to keep the same one your entire life? That's how our brains work. So why don't we treat them that way? If you've never been to therapy, now is the time to go. If you think you might need therapy, your past due, therapy is an excellent way to take care of your brain. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat only therapy sessions. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. BetterHelp is much more affordable than in-person therapy. And I love how fast it is because you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash ratchet. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash ratchet. What other news do we have? If we take this episode last week, I would have talked about Tyrese. He was dating some young chick. Tyrese is my age or older. How old is Tyrese? Yeah, Tyrese is 43. He's six months older than me. He was dating some, he was dating a young lady in her early 20s, an Instagram model. Real cute girl. But they've been together for a minute. Tyrese wanted to get married. This is based on an Instagram post that he that he published last week. I'm checking now. I don't think I screenshotted it. And, and thankfully, someone had the good sense to tell him to take it down. But he and his girlfriend broke up. And Tyrese had one of his epic Tyrese meltdowns. On Instagram. I gotta search this shit now. Tyrese breakup girlfriend. That's how much I didn't care. Zeli. Zeli. Z-E-L-I-E. Is his girlfriend. So his version of events. Of why they broke up. Is he wanted to get married. And. She didn't. And. He encouraged people. To go DM. And Tyrese has like over a million followers. No, Tyrese has 15.9 million followers. I thought it was 1.5 million. I'm sorry. He has 15.9 million followers. He got on Instagram and announced that he broke up with his girlfriend. And then he encouraged his 15.9 million followers to DM, have fun. And then he tagged his ex-girlfriend's Instagram account. I was like, this manipulative bullshit, because this woman don't want to be with you. You're going to tell 16 million people to flood her DMs? Really? So I'm reading this on the Daily Mail. They said Tyrese posted a a bizarre, that's their word, their description. They said, quote, bizarre 16 second video of a small deer wrapped in a snake's hole. I think Tyrese thinks he's the deer. He wrote in the caption, I think this was a kind of a prayer of sorts. He said, stop trying to convince me that your daughter is not a snake. Snake is in all caps. He said, I just want to be released from this strong, devilish allure, the sexual seduction of a master manipulator who knows how to convince everyone that she's not mean or there to kill you. Is this his way of saying he pussy with? Like, sir, 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 you are a deer ensnared by a snake. You want to be released from her strong, devilish allure? That young girl put it on you. She got young girl energy. I understand. Tyrese continued. He said, please, God. And he put this in caps. He said, release me. Release me from your poison. Release me from your stronghold. Release me. I belong to the kingdom. I have so much more work to do. He went on to say that he wanted to get married and settle down. 
you would like to have a family and really, really nest and embrace the comforts of family and married life. He said he don't like to be in the streets. He likes to sit home and smoke hookah. I said, that's part of the problem, sir. You went and got this hot chick. She's gorgeous. You went and got this hot chick in her mid-20s who want to be in the streets, who want to be out, who want to flaunt that beautiful 20-something-year-old body, and you want to sit at home and smoke hookah. That's not fun. I remember being 25, and I dated a guy who was 34. This guy wanted to marry me, bought a condo. He wanted me to move in. I mean, he was like, I got you. I'll take care of everything. You could go to law school full-time. When I was dating him, I hadn't hit my stride career-wise yet because, again, 25. Um, so law school was always my backup plan. So he was like, yeah, like since the book thing and the writing thing isn't working out, you could go to law school full time and I'll cover us. He had this whole life plan laid out and it was a good plan. It really was. But it wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to go dance on tables in Miami and, and that was really it. And after we broke up, I think we broke up by Labor Day, but I but I called up the girls and I was like, what y'all doing? Let's go to Miami. And I went to Miami and danced on tables and I was like, worth it. I still think that to this day. He's a very lovely man. I have nothing at all negative to say about him ever. He was a really good dude. He treated me really well. But I would have a life that's entirely different than the one that I have right now. And truth be told, I mean, my life is kind of chaotic right now. Like, literally, I don't know where my worldly possessions are. And I'm moving to another freaking continent. Everything is up in the air. It's not stable. And I'm someone who used to thrive on stability. I lived in my apartment in New York for 15 years. Like, I loved that people would come to my house. They would always know which cabinet the ketchup was in. They always knew where the forks and the ketchup were. I liked being the stable friend who didn't move every two to three years and has had the same phone number since literally 2000. I liked being that stable person. And now, and now all I have is the phone number. But yeah, but Tyree's trying to get this young girl to sit in the house on Sunday nights and, and smoke hookah with him. Sir, bye. You went and got your young trophy chick. You're supposed to take her out and show her off, sir. I don't know where these middle-aged men got the idea that these, like, young chicks date them. Yes. Run them for their money. Yes. Fuck them. Sure. Why not? Tyree's a very attractive man. He's in great shape. He's also twice divorced with a kid. Look, that's life. Life happens. And look, that's life. Life happens. But, like, why would you expect that to be appealing to a 25-year-old? That's too much life for a 25-year-old. That's too much baggage. But Tyrese in his caption, or maybe it was somewhere else, but he was he was saying that he wanted to be married. He wanted to settle down. He wants a wife and a family and all of that. And I was like, sir, if you don't go get you a 35-year-old woman who will marry you in six months, maybe. Because he got issues. He stay having a meltdown on the internet. Like, he does this with every woman he dates, every breakup. But nobody want to deal with that shit. Sometimes things don't work out, and it's okay. There's no need to get on the internet and... Tell 16 million people to go spam somebody. But somebody will marry him. There is some 35 and up year old woman who will be glad to be his wife, who will gladly take on all his baggage and all his emotions, who thinks she could fix him. There's somebody willing to do it. But a 25 year old, sir, sir, he'll have another woman soon enough. And then soon after that, he'll be on Instagram blasting her because that's the pattern. <sighs> I wanted to do a transition here where I said, speaking of men who are filled with drama. And I'm not going to do that transition only because this man is in crisis. John Gray. We've spoken a lot about John Gray. John Gray is not doing so well health wise. He's on the men. But on July 10th, which I only remember because it was the day after my birthday, his wife, Adventure Gray, got on Instagram and she asked people to pray for her husband. She posted a picture of his hand. He's got a, what's it called? He's got the hospital ID bracelet on and her hand is covering hers, her left hand, because you can see like the gigantic rock. You can see the gigantic rock and the uh, the wedding band. It's a very intentional photo. And then she posted pictures of, of the hospital room with the, the hospital room that he's in with the curtains drawn. And then it looks like she posted a picture of, of his monitor. You know, the monitor they hook you up to when you're in the hospital that showed his name. So I guess she wanted people to know that she wasn't playing. But she got on Instagram, 245,000 followers she has. She says, my family and I stand in need of a miracle. Please keep my husband in your prayers. She said, after feeling a little different over the past couple weeks, he went to the ER on Thursday evening. He was immediately admitted to CCU with a saddle pulmonary embolism in the pulmonary artery and more lung blood clots. 
I'm not exactly sure exactly what that is. I do know that blood clots are bad. For the people like me who don't understand exactly what it is, she goes on to say very clearly, to place this in perspective, the doctor said that people have come into the hospital dead with this exact scenario he walked in with. She said, the doctor said God has to keep him through the night and he cannot move, not even to get up and go to the bathroom. But Aventa, first lady that she is, she said, God isn't finished. Clots have to bow to my God. That's all. She said, I need as many people who believe in the miracle healing power of Jesus Christ to join me and my family and our church as we cry out on behalf of John W. Gray III. I'm rocking with God relentlessly. I mean, so that's terrible to hear. You know, we talked a lot about John Gray. I wanted him to act right. I didn't want him to die. Stop embarrassing himself and his family and his marriage. So Mrs. Gray has been giving updates over the past few days. And John Gray's condition has been improving substantially. So that's very good to hear. Um, I'm glad that he is on the mend. She posted, was this earlier today? She posted yesterday. It was the anniversary 12-year anniversary of when he proposed to her. And she said in the caption, he proposed and I said, yes, I will go on this journey with you and marry you. And she said, I would say it again. God knows it all. And she added, thank you for choosing me. And she said, hashtag, he proposed to me. Hashtag, I said yes. Hashtag, now and then. Okay, that's their life. That's their business. Two, three weeks before his medical emergency, John Gray was in another, yet another cheating scandal. Emotionally cheated. Because John Gray has like a special kink where he doesn't physically engage with other people, even according to the people. I think this one was, what was the, what was the term that was used to describe his, his this latest um, affair of sorts? She was like a virtual masseuse. I was like, what the fuck is a virtual masseuse? And somebody had explained to me, they were like, oh, it's the only fans. Like they were like, oh, it's like mutual masturbation, but like on camera. And I was like, oh, like one of those ads that pop up, like when you're watching Pornhub. Okay. That was his latest scandal. And then, you know, this happened. That was the third time that he's been caught out there being inappropriate, unfaithful, whatever it is on his wife. And he doesn't have a lot of discretion um, in that regard. Her post from yesterday about their anniversary makes it pretty clear that she's on some like, and I am telling you, she ain't going. She ain't going nowhere. This may be the best man she's ever known. I don't know. I don't know. That's that's a wife and a husband and people make all sorts of, of compromises and deals and and whatever to, to keep their marriages. And so, you know, that it ain't my marriage. Do what you want, sis. I just do hope. I just do hope that when, when he comes to, when he, when he fully recovers, I would, I, w- I would like to speak that over his life. Because again, like I just wanted a man to stop acting trifling and treat this woman decent. Stop embarrassing his family. I did not want him to die. I hope that he has a come to Jesus moment, a, a Saul Paul on the way to Damascus moment. And he realizes the good thing that he has in this woman. Cause she better than me. I'm, I might pray for you as the father of my kids. I won't leave you in the hospital by yourself. I won't let you die alone. I might send your kids up there to be with you. I might call your mama and tell her to come sit with you. But this whole, I'm going to ask the whole internet to pray. And I'm going to be out here posting about like our anniversary. I'm going to be holding your hand on your hospital bed. Like, please realize that this is, it's not the woman I want to be, but it's the, it's the type of woman I would want to be married to. I would want someone who, who, who loved me enough, despite my shit, to hold my hand when they think I'm dying who after all the bullshit I put them through, still ask people who humbles themselves, who loses their pride and ego, because everybody knows what the man did. Everybody knows what the stories have been, what the most recent story is. Because literally it was two to three weeks ago. Everybody knows what that is. And she still got on the internet and was like, my husband needs your help. We need your prayers. And she sat there and she posted the picture with the ring on, Despite all the cheating scandals, despite the most, the current cheating scandal, the ongoing in the midst of it shit is posting a picture, holding that man's hand with her big ass ring on for the world to see, asking folks, pray for my husband. When he gets better, not if, when he gets better, was speaking survival and recovery over his life. When he gets better, I hope that he changes his ways because this is a good woman. I don't understand all her choices, but this is a good woman. I don't know about her self-esteem and all that shit, but this is a good woman. She is holding her vows 
in a way that he has not done. She deserves that loyalty in return. I hope he does that for her. Finally. Whew, child. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn how to use your voice as an instrument from Mariah Carey. You can learn songwriting from John Legend. Or you can learn gymnastics with Simone Biles. They have everything. With over 100 classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. I've been taking master classes for at least four years now. I love it. I started with Shonda Rhimes and Aaron Sorkin, but then I just started taking classes to learn all sorts of things. How to cook, how to perform on a stage, how to hit a tennis ball better. I don't even play tennis. I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every master class. And as a ratchet and respectable listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash ratchet. That's masterclass.com slash ratchet for 15% off masterclass. Feeling your best starts with what you eat. Sakara helps you live a healthy, balanced lifestyle and truly enjoy it with delicious, plant-rich, transformational nutrition that builds a foundation for living in your best body. Sakara is a wellness company anchored in food as a medicine on a mission to nourish your body through the power of plants. Their nutritionally designed chef-crafted breakfasts, lunches, and dinners are made with powerful plant-rich ingredients, helping boost your energy, support your digestion, curb your sugar cravings, and my favorite part, get your skin glowing. Plus, it's so convenient. It's all delivered right to your door and ready to eat. And right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash ratchet or enter code ratchet at checkout. That's Sakara, S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash ratchet to get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash ratchet. I have Khloe Kardashian on this list. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. Khloe Kardashian has a kid by NBA player Tristan Thompson. I can't tell you nothing about what team he plays for, what position he plays for. I never hear any news about this man that actually has to do with his job as a professional NBA player. I only hear about his shenanigans. Khloe and Tristan had this kid. He's been caught multiple times cheating on her in very public ways. One of them was with Jordan Woods, who is. Chloe's little sister, Kylie, her best friend was Jordan and Tristan hit on Jordan. He might have kissed her or something like that. And Chloe and the Kardashians as a whole, their response was to attack Jordan, who I think was probably like 21 at the time. And I was like, you're attacking this 21 year old girl, like your little sister's best friend. You're attacking this 21 year old girl instead of the guy who you're in a relationship with. Like, isn't he the problem? I don't remember if Chloe had a kid then, if she was pregnant then. I don't remember. But yeah, but they ostracized Jordan, which is how I became familiar with her. And I was like, who is this black girl that like the Kardashians are attacking? And I was like, that's a child. That's literally how Jordan popped on my radar. And I was like, no, fuck that. Team Jordan. But yeah, but, but he's had multiple cheating scandals. There was something else with like a woman coming out of his hotel or walking to his hotel with him. Her and Tristan have been back and forth a million times. He's a whore. Everyone knows he's a whore. He knows he's a whore. The most recent thing, and I mean like last month or the month before, was he got some woman pregnant and then he wrote an open letter of apology to Chloe for that. But as it would turn out, news broke last week, I guess, that Tristan and Chloe were having a second child via surrogate. So I was like, all the bullshit that you went through with this man, you went your egg and his sperm and to a doctor and, and, you know, paid whatever money to insert into this woman and then also pay her. And I know everybody has like a bunch of money. So the money that they spent, it's not like it's breaking the bank or anything. But I'm like, you willfully, deliberately, purposefully, intentionally um, paid to have another child with this dude 
who has treated you like shit, both publicly and privately. Some people are fine with being treated like shit privately. They just don't want to be publicly embarrassed. Like, that's when they draw the line. You can't have people out here looking at me like I'm stupid. Like, I could be stupid at home in private. I can't have people looking at me stupid in public thinking I'm an idiot. But, but no, he did that too. Um, and then she, she's, she's intentionally having another baby with him. And I was like, girl, I guess. I'm under the impression that because all the daughters do this too, is all of their children are by the same man. Like Kim and Kanye have four kids. Courtney has three kids with the drunk and then left him. And then Kylie has two kids with, what's the guy that got all them people killed? The black guy with the braids. Is it Travis? Travis Scott. And then now Chloe is having these two kids with a degenerate infidel. Like I just... Is it that serious for, for all the children to have the same father that she would keep reproducing with, with fuck ups? I mean, I guess to them it is. I mean, maybe the logic is I got to deal with them anyway, fuck up or not, because I already have one child with him. So what's another one? And at least you could be like, oh, my kids have the same dad. Like, is that a flex? I guess. It, that's just a weird flex to me. I have more than one kid with a degenerate it's just so I can say that all my kids have the same dad. Like, who cares? I would personally think it would be more of a flex to be like, yeah, okay, I had my kids. I had a kid with this degenerate, realized he was such, and then got my life together, a la like Sierra, and went and found like, you know, a good man to like actually build a life with and have additional children with because I really just don't want to have a whole bunch of kids by a fuck up. But again, I guess you got to deal with his ass anyway. I don't know. That wouldn't have been my choice because she looks crazy. And, and that story came out last week. Literally, the story right now that's everywhere about Tristan is he's somewhere overseas walking around holding hands with, like, some new chick. So y'all went and had, like, a whole nother kid together and y'all not even together at all? Or you are together and he's cheating on you, like, a week after a pregnancy announcement? What? How is this life? This is why people be like, money doesn't change you. Money doesn't make you a better person. Money makes you more of what you are. You didn't have common and self-esteem when you was, not that the Kardashians was ever broke, but you didn't have common sense and self-esteem when you was making hundreds of thousands and you still don't have them when you're making tens of millions. <sighs> Unfortunately, that's not something you could purchase. I watched the, um, or better, I listened to. I didn't watch because I had something else to do. So I had it on in the background. But the, but the Kevin Gates interview that Carisha did on her podcast, oh my God. If you haven't had a chance to listen to it, it is, it is profane. It is vile. It is also insightful. It is hilarious. It is riveting. I could not stop listening. Like once a minute, I was like, nigga, what? What? He says some things that are totally enlightening and totally progressive. And then some things like, did you really just say that in public? If you haven't had a chance to listen to it, please do. Very often, I don't mind having like a singular podcast, being like the only person who's speaking. Like, I need to go find somebody to talk about this episode with. Because, like, this must be deconstructed. Because that interview, I described it to one of my friends. I was like, it's like Dave Chappelle when he was doing the Rick James skits. And then Rick James actually appeared. And Rick James was like, I didn't put my feet on nobody's couch. And then two seconds later, he was like, so yeah, I have my feet on the couch. You were like, wait, what? That's what this Kevin Gates interview is. Like, it's, it was riveting. But next week, we'll talk about the Kevin Gates interview. So if you have a chance, familiarize yourself. Use headphones. I can be profane. He said bitch and dog slut every other word. So if you're going to listen, put your headphones on. It's a lot. It's a lot. But if you just want to be, like, intrigued, entertained, if you want to have a head tilt moment, this is for you. So that is the episode for this week. We'll be back with more on Friday. My dad just knocked on the door and told me that the guy said my truck is here or here is in five minutes away. So we'll be back on Friday. Okay. Okay. Bye.